So about two years ago, in March 2020, we all collectively realized something, and that was that we had nowhere to go, no one to see, and a lot of extra time on our hands. I soon made the realization that if I wasn't going to learn game development now, then I was never going to be able to learn game development. So this is the story of how I built and launched my very first mobile game. I very naively thought that because I was a designer and because I was a front-end developer that a lot of this would be very easy to pick up, especially the art aspect, and I was very wrong. I was very wrong. And the project that took me nine months to complete probably could have been done in two if I spent maybe $30 and pushed down my pride a little bit. So I'm sitting there on my balcony, my mimosa in hand, and I've made the decision that I want to build a game, but I don't know what I want to build, and I definitely want it to be fun, but since I didn't have any experience with the actual development part, I didn't want to spend months and months or years to develop a new concept only for it not to be fun after all of that time of hard work. So I did a little bit of research, and I found that the best way forward was to recreate something that already exists, but then to put a little bit of a spin on it. So I thought I'll take an arcade game and turn it into a mobile game and then I'll put my own twist on it so that it's interesting and fresh. And that's exactly what I did. So the two games that I ended up downloading first were Galaga and Brick Breaker, and I had such a blast playing Brick Breaker that I was playing it for hours upon end just in my spare time when I was on the couch, when I was watching TV, and then I thought to myself, okay, that's the one. Another really great reason to adapt a classic arcade game is because they've existed for decades, they're very well known, and there's going to be a lot of support. So you're gonna have a lot of people who have already done this. There's gonna be lots of tutorials on how you can do this. So the last thing you want when you're building your game, especially if you don't have the coding experience, is to get to a wall and not know how to keep going. You definitely will have those moments, but for your first project, you really just need to be able to see it through and have support and try to put the pieces together. So the first thing that I learned is Replicate success. After going through lots of time brainstorming and trying to create all of these new ideas, I had the realization, what if my game's not fun? And I'm here to tell you that there's nothing wrong with creating a game in a genre. You don't have to invent sliced bread, if you will. Fun is very, very elusive. Fun is, is really hard to define. And not knowing if your game is going to be fun by creating a new idea, you could spend months and months developing a game that you think is going to be an awesome idea, and then after a year or two of hard work, you don't even like it. Find a game where the core mechanics already exist and you already know that they're fun. So some examples are Infinite Runners, you could do Solitaire, Brick Breakers, you could do Bubble Shooters, you could do 3D match games, you could recreate a version of Flappy Bird, add some different UI, add some different artwork, and really make it your own and make it a fun twist on a game. So, the idea for my game um, was that I was going to take the classic game Brick Breaker and then put my own twist on it. I didn't know exactly what that was going to be at first, but then I remembered something that my mom always used to say to me, and has said to me my entire life, and that's that I'm always so good with color. And I've never quite known what that feedback means, but whenever she saw my drawings when I was younger and my artwork when I got older, she would always say, wow, you're so good with colors. So I thought, okay, let's make that the premise of the game. I decided to name my game Color Crush. The whole premise is that you go through the levels and that you unlock the colors. So you start out with two colors, and as you go through those levels, you're eventually introduced to more. As you get to the higher levels, you have access to all of the colors of the rainbow. So it's a very colorful and very bright game. So it still has the core mechanics and the fun part of Brick Breaker, but I've been able to put my own personality and my own spin on it. And now I've created something new. My next piece of advice is start 
microscopic small. Take an idea you have for your project, slice it in half, and then you might think that that's okay, but then slice it in half again. Just keep slicing. Keep slicing. Because you want to be able to put out something that is done in a relatively short amount of time so that you can start on your next project and get a return on your investment, hopefully. Every game developer dreams of being able to create their own game like Assassin's Creed or like Fallout or like Skyrim, but it's really, really hard to do if your team members are looking back at you in the mirror, which for me they are. <laughs> However, that doesn't mean that you can't create some really amazing games by yourself. This brings me to my next point. As a game developer, you're only as good as your tools, so pick your game engine wisely. There's always going to be a learning curve associated with learning a new game engine, always. So the game engine of choice that I decided to use was Unity because I wanted to build a mobile game and I wanted to build a 2D game. And in general, I'm very interested in creating 2D games. And I learned that if I wanted to get good at 2D, I was going to have to learn Unity or some other type of mobile game engine. Now, I have a whole article on Unity versus Unreal Engine, and I'll probably make a video about it at some point. But it's really like comparing apples and oranges. If you're really interested in 2D and you want to make mobile games specifically, I highly, highly recommend Unity for multiple reasons. But if you're really into amazing Unreal graphics, then Unreal is a really good way to go. At this point in my game development journey, I strongly discourage creating your own game engine or trying another type of game engine, especially if it's paid. Unity Engine and Unreal Engine are both free and they are industry standard tools. There is so much support behind these communities. Now, don't get me wrong. I'm not against paying money for game development, but I am against subscription models because I personally believe the house always wins. And on that note, that brings me to my next point. You don't have to be a martyr to be a game developer. You don't have to create all of your own assets. You don't have to write all of your own music. You don't have to write a game engine. It's okay not to do everything. And if you wanna release multiple games throughout your lifetime, that's probably what you're gonna have to do. Even if you're good at all of those things and you're a very jack of trades type of person, which I feel like a lot of game developers are, it's okay to find assets on opengameart.com or to pay $5 for some UI or $5 for music. I'm using the $5 example, but there are lots of game developers who, even for a simple mobile game, will pay one to $3,000 just to have their game developed because they feel like they're personally lacking on the development side or on the art side and they want to release a good game. While it's definitely worth learning how to build some of the core mechanics of your game, your players probably aren't going to be impressed if you have a dialogue system, or if you have a save system, or if you have an inventory system, because these are things that come standard in every single game. And I guarantee you there's some game development studio in Sweden or Finland that has already created this, and it's $10 on the Unity Asset Store. The really cool thing about game development is that a lot of those assets are very cheap, so for the price tag of, you know, $30, you can buy an entire template for your game, have all of the core mechanics there, and then just come in and do what you want to do. For Color Crush, this is not what I did. I ended up finding a tutorial series on YouTube where someone step-by-step -step broke down how to make the classic game. It was about a 20-hour playlist, and I would just sit there after I got off of work and I'd pull up my laptop and then I would watch this playlist. I would try to code it out on my own, debug any problems that I was having. Just that in itself took about a month. And then from there, once I finally got to the end of the tutorial, I realized that it wasn't a complete game and that if I wanted to take it to the next level, I was going to have to make a lot of my own functionality and add a lot more pizzazz than it had. So with limited programming knowledge and a lot of grit, I took what I learned from that tutorial and I trudged forward and tried to fill out the rest of the game. And my next tip is be okay without perfection. 
you know, define your MVP, which is your minimum viable product. What is the bare minimum that you will accept when you actually release your game? What are you okay with pushing out and it not being perfect? So you have your basis of your game, you have a little bit of the programming worked out, uh, what do you do next? I would recommend as soon as you have a playable prototype, getting it in front of some people and getting some initial feedback. The earlier you can get feedback, the better. And my last piece of advice is just do what you have to do to get it out the door. Ship a product that you're proud of. And as the sole game developer of your game, you're going to see all of the flaws, you're going to see all of the imperfections. You quite likely will hate your game by the time that you're done with it. But you should feel proud about actually releasing something. Every time you release something, you've learned a lot. You can take all of those principles and apply them to your next project, and you'll have real people who are playing your game so that you can get feedback on what to do in the next game, or what to improve upon in your current game. So from start to finish, Color Crush ended up taking me about nine months. However, by the end of nine months, I felt like I could call myself a programmer. Game development is one of the really interesting fields where Every single discipline can take a lifetime to master. You have art, you have character creation, you have animation, you have audio, you have world building and game design and UI design. You're fighting the clock more than you are fighting anything else. So even if you feel like you can do all of these different parts of your game, ask yourself if you should. Pick something that you think you can accomplish in the next three or six months or so. Think about your first game as a platform for you to build all of your other games. So thank you so much for tuning in. Uh, I want to post a lot more videos like this on my channel. I've been kind of trying to pivot into the game development and tech niche and that's why I haven't had a lot of content posted in the past few months so stick around and like and subscribe if you want to see more game development stories more tutorials and just overall news about game development. But until then, thank you so much and happy coding.